So now, a 555 timer can be used as an inverter. You tie the trigger pin and the threshold pin together. You get more than two thirds of the supply voltage that'll set the output low. You get less than one third of the supply voltage that will set the output high. Between those two points, the output will stay in whatever state it was last put into. I usually use a blue LED to indicate when the output is low, and I usually use a red LED to indicate when the output's high. You lose a little bit of voltage when the output is high. So here you can see we're working with 6 volts. We drop below uh, 2 volts with our signal, the output goes high. Then we go above 4 volts with our signal, the output goes low. In between, it will be either one, whichever one we last put it into. So now we'll start off looking at the signal voltage of our 555 timer used as an inverter. We got 6 volts, we drop below 2 volts, 1 third supply voltage, the output goes high. Then we got to go above 2 thirds of the supply voltage, 4 volts right there for the output to go low. So that's our signal. In between it will be either one. So now we're going to go to the output. That's where the two resistors are connected together. There you can see we got our low output because uh, our signal voltage is high enough uh, right there. It's uh, 6 volts. Now I'm going to drop it below 2 volts and uh, the output goes high. So always remember with the 555 timer, the NE or the Micro A 555 timer, you usually fall probably about a volt and a half short of the positive supply right there. Um, just from the transistors that uh, are uh, made with it. There's other ones, other 555s that go rail to rail, but uh, those two do not. And NE555 is very common.